Hey there, Nature Ninos. How are you? You might notice I'm missing something today. What do I usually have? That's right, some binoculars, right? But today I brought some different things. What do you think we use these for? Mm, gardening, that is right. Today's book is all about gardening. It's called City Garden. And this book is written by a woman called Diane DeSalvo Ryan. And it's a really wonderful story. And I chose this story this week for two reasons. First of all, many of you, Nature Ninos, perhaps have a garden at home, or maybe you have a grandparent with a garden, or a friend, or maybe you're even part of a community garden, or perhaps you even just have a few flowers in pots. So this time of year, our gardens really, really bloom. So that was one reason why I thought this would make for good storytelling today. The other reason is because to plant and grow a garden, there is something really important we need. What is this? Can you even hear it? Let me show you like this. What is that? Can you see in my hand? That is soil. Some people call this dirt. And if it's really, really wet, they call it mud. But soil is the best word because soil gives it the most respect for what it is. This grows our food. This week, however, is an exciting week. On Monday, the 29th of June, just a few days ago, we celebrated International Mud Day. Who knew? Who knew that there was an International Mud Day? Who knew? Well, there is. So at Nature Ninos, we are, all of this week, along with the city of Albuquerque, parks and open spaces, we are thinking about soil, dirt, and mud. International Mud Day, International Mud Week. So today, we're going to read this story City Green, where this little girl really gets some people motivated in her community and her city to grow a garden using lots of soil. So what we'll do first, as we usually do, is I am going to share my screen here. There we go. And we are going to learn the signs for these words that talk about gardening, okay? So all of these words may not necessarily be in our story this week, but they are all related to having a garden. So we have 10, 10, and here we go. This is the first one. Do you remember this? This is called soil, right? Just moving this out of the way in case it's blocking the word for my reading friends out there. Soil. So we sign that like this, soil. And that's also actually how we sign dirt and mud. So your hand under your chin just wiggles. Soil. Soil. The next word we have is... My slide is not wanting to... Go oh, for me, there we go, land. Now land is made up of lots and lots of soil, right? And also trees, we've seen that word before. Maybe flowers, maybe you know, um, water. I can see a little bit of water there, um, but primarily it's soil. However, we sign land like this, land land. 
So you kind of rub your thumbs along your fingers, land, and it's sort of held, I'm holding it up because of the camera, but it's sort of held at your um, elbow's length. You can't, you can't see me as I'm signing it now, so I have to lift my hands up. Um, but kind of as though you have little seeds in your hand and you are letting them out into the soil on your land, gorilla garden. Okay, next one is, let's see. Next one is city. This is how we sign city. Put your hands, to, your fingertips together like this, and then you kind of go like this and you move your hands along. So it's sort of like many, many, many little buildings. If you imagine this being a building, signing it like this, you're signing many, 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 many buildings. This story takes place in a city building. In this particular story, the buildings where the people live look a little bit like this one. In some cities, you'll see, like in the picture we just saw before, it's a much bigger building. Um, we sign building like this. Put your, your two fingers together like this, and you go like this, building, building, building. Okay, so city, building. Next, we have garden. Garden, this is an obvious sign. Things grow, right? So you take one hand, kind of make a loose fist, and then you push it through the other, and all your fingers sprout up like little, little sprouts. That's garden. Seeds, seeds. So this is a fun sign. Put your hand in a fist with your palm facing you and flick up your little pinky finger. Seeds, seeds. Some people sign it like this, like this is a pea pod. And then boop, 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 all the little peas along the side. But I like this one. Seeds. Seeds. Okay. Vegetables. Some people grow vegetables in their garden. Vegetables. Vegetables. So this is a V in sign language. And you're going to put your pointer finger kind of near your jaw and then twist it so that your middle finger then touches your chin. For me, I have a dimple right there. You see that? vegetable vegetable do you like your vegetables i love mwah, vegetables they're delicious my favorite i have to eat a lot a lot a lot a lot many 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 vegetables every day or i am not happy my body is not happy this is what these are fruits so we do vegetable like this vegetable and fruit, you put your thumb and your pointer finger together, and then you just twist that in that same spot, kind of where my little dimple is. Fruit, fruit. Some people, well, no, this is more appropriately what you usually see. This can be a sign for berries and things like that. Um, I guess I was thinking about the strawberries I have I'm going to eat later on. Anyway, fruit. Do you like fruit? I love, mm summer fruit, particularly strawberries, cherries, nectarines, peaches. Mm, I can hardly wait. What about these? What are these called? They are flowers. We've had that sign before, flowers. So just imagine you're holding a flower and you're sniffing a flower. And finally, the last sign out of the 10 that we went over today, is the sign for community. Now this is interesting. The very first sign in the mix was the sign for city. Do you remember? City. Well, we actually sign community the same way, community. And I think that's because oftentimes a city can feel like a community. It can feel like a really big family where many people belong. What you will find though, just like this picture on your screen of these people working in a garden, I think you will find once we read this story that gardens can build community. Gardens can build community. So that's a wonderful thing. If you've always wondered about a garden and you've never been involved in one before, now is a good time to ask your mom and dad or your special adult if you can you can grow some things at home um, or maybe go visit a, a garden nearby. There are such things as community garden. 
So it's worth checking out. It's enjoyed learning those signs. Now I'm going to read the story. Do you remember what it's called? City Green. And we actually did colors recently. So we would sign City Green like this, City Green. City Green. So that's the name of the book this week, City Green. And again, it's written by somebody called Diane DeSalvo Ryan. Here we go. There used to be a building right here on this lot. It was three fours up and down, an empty building nailed up shut for as long as I could remember. My friend, Miss Rosa, told me old man Hammer used to live there. Some other neighbors, too. But when I asked him about that, he only hollered, scram! Old man Hammer, hard as nails. I don't know, old man Hammer doesn't sound very friendly, does he? You see, those are her buildings that she lives in in her city. Last year, two people from the city came by dressed in suits and holding papers. They said, this building is unsafe. It will have to be torn down. By winter, a crane with a wrecking ball was parked outside. Mama gathered everyone to watch from our front window. In three slow blows, that building was knocked into a heap of pieces. Then workers took the rubble away in a truck and filled the hole with dirt. Wow, it's kind of hard to see the wrecking ball. There, I'm going to point to it in case you missed it. That we're watching. Now this block looks like a big smile with one tooth missing. Old man Hammer sits on his stoop and shakes his head. Look at that piece of junk land on a city block, old man Hammer says. Once that building could have been saved, but nobody even tried. And every day when I pass this lot, it makes me sad to see it. Every single day. Then comes spring and right on schedule, Miss Rosa starts cleaning her coffee cans. Miss Rosa and I keep coffee cans outside our window sills. Every year we buy two packets of seeds at the hardware store, sometimes marigolds, sometimes zinnias, and one time we tried tomatoes. We go to the park, scoop some dirt, and fill up the cans halfway. This time, Old Man Hammer stops us on the way to the park. This good-for-nothing lot has plenty of dirt right here, he says. Then all at once I look at Miss Rosa and she is smiling back at me. A lot of dirt, Miss Rosa says. Like one big huge coffee can, I say. That's when we decide to do something about this lot. Quick as a wink, I'm digging away, already thinking of gardens and flowers. But old man Hammer shakes his finger. You can't dig more dirt than that. This lot is city property. Miss Rosa and I go to see Mr. Bennett. He used to work for the city. I seem to remember a program, he says, that lets people rent empty lots. That's how Miss Rosa and I form a group of people from our block. We pass around a petition that says, we want to lease this lot. In less than a week, we have plenty of names. Sign with us, I ask Old Man Hammer. I'm not a sign in nothing, he says. 
and nothing is what's gonna happen. But something did. The next week, a bunch of us take a bus to City Hall. We walk up the steps to the proper office and hands the woman our list. She checks her files and types some notes and makes some copies. That will be one dollar, please. We rent the lot from the city that day. It was just as simple as that. Saturday morning, I'm up with the sun and looking at this lot. My mama looks out too. Marcy, she says, and hugs me close. Today, I'm helping you and Rosa. After shopping, Mama empties her grocery bags and folds them flat to carry under her arm. Come on, Mrs. B, Mama tells her friend. We're going to clear this lot. Then what do you know, but my brother comes along. My brother is tall and strong. At first, he scratches his neck and shakes his head just like old man Hammer. But Mama smiles and says, none of that here. So all day long, he piles junk in those bags and carries them to the curb. Now this time of day is early. Neighbors pass by and see what we're doing. Most say, we want to help too. They have a little time to spare. Then this one calls that one and that one calls the other. And here we are. Come on and help, I call to old man Hammer. I'm not a helping nobody, he hollers. You're all wasting your time. Sour grapes, my mama'd say, and sour grapes is right. Just before supper, when we are good and hungry, my mama looks around this lot. Marcy, she says, you're making something happen here. Go, Marcy, go. Next day, the city drops off tools like rakes and brooms and a dumpster for trash. Now there's even more neighbors helping. Miss Rosa, my brother, and I say good morning to Old Man Hammer, but Old Man Hammer just waves like he's swatting a fly. Why is Old Man Hammer so mean and cranky these days, my brother asks. Maybe he's really sad, I tell him. Maybe he misses his building. That rotten old building, my brother shrugs. He should be happy the city tore down that mess. Give him time, Miss Rosa says. Good things take time. Mr. Bennett brings wood, old slats he saved, and nails in a cup. I knew all along I saved them for something, he says. This wood here is good wood. Then Mr. Rocco from two houses down comes carrying two cans of paint. I'll never use these, he says. The color's too bright, but here, this lot could use some brightening up. Well, anyone can tell with all the excitement that something is going to happen. Something is going on, and everyone has an idea about what to plant. Strawberries, carrots, lettuce, and more. Tulips and daisies, petunias, and more. Sunny turns the dirt over with a snow shovel. Even Leslie's baby tries to dig with a spoon. For lunch, Miss Rosa brings milk and peanut butter and jelly and spreads a beach towel down where the junk is cleared. By the end of the day, a fence is built and painted as bright as the sun. Later, Mama kisses my cheek and closes my bedroom door. By the streetlights, I see old man Hammer coming down his steps to open the gate and walk to the back of the slot. He bends down quick, sprinkling something from his pocket and covering it over with dirt. In the morning, I tell my brother, oh, Marcy, he says, you're dreaming. 
you're wishing way too hard. But I know I saw what I saw. And I tell my mama, old man hammers planted some seeds. Right after breakfast, I walk to the back of this lot. And there it is, a tiny raised bed of soil. It's neat and tidy, just like the rose we planted. Now I know for sure that old man Hammer planted something. So I pat the soil for good luck and make a little fence to keep those seeds safe. Every day I go for a look inside our garden lot. Other neighbors stop in too. One day Mrs. Wells comes by. This is right where my grandmother's bedroom used to be, she says. That's why I planted my flowers there. I feel sad when I hear that. With all the digging and planting and weeding and watering and dreaming, I'd forgotten about the building that used to be on this lot. Old Man Hammer had lived there too. I go to the back where he planted his seeds. I wonder if this was the place where his room used to be. I look down beside my feet. Tiny stems are sprouting. Old man hammer seeds have grown. I run to his stoop. Come with me. Come with me, I beg, tugging at his hand. You'll want to see. I walk him past the hollyhocks, the daisies, the peppers, the rows of lettuce. I show him the strawberries that I had planted. When old man hammer sees his little garden bed, his sour grapes turn sweet. Marcy child he shakes his head this lot was good for nothing now it's nothing but good he says soon summertime comes and this lot really grows it fills with vegetables, herbs, and flowers. And way in the back, taller than anything else, is a beautiful patch of yellow sunflowers. Old Man Hammer comes every day. He sits in the sun, eats his lunch, and sometimes comes back with his supper. Nobody knows how the sunflowers came. Not Leslie, not my brother, not Miss Rosa not Mr. Bennett or Sonny or anyone else, but old man Hammer just sits there smiling at me. We know whose flowers they are. The end. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Really, really great story. And you can find out about community gardens in your area by asking your mom or dad, or if you're old enough, just typing in local community gardens or growing my first garden. So I hope that you are having a fabulous day and I hope you will take some time during this International Mud Week to think a little bit about soil and where all of our delicious and wonderful food comes from. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Nature Ninos will be back next week. Ciao for now. Adios.